Welcome to chapter 3 of the book of Zechariah. It begins with, as we mentioned in the last chapter, with the word of Jesus. This is Jesus in the New Testament, and that's called, it's Yeshua in the Hebrew, but the name of Jesus in the New Testament is Greek, Jesus. Uh, that's how it's uh, spelt and pronounced. And the Greek Old Testament, the, called the Septuagint, also has uh, Jesus for other people, but it calls him Joshua instead of Jesus. Now, why? I don't know. Someplace in the translations of the English Bible, you can probably go back to the King James or maybe earlier and how they decided these names. But I just want you to know that. So it begins, and uh, the Lord showed to me, which would have been Zechariah, uh, Joshua, the great priest, standing in front of the angel, Angelou, uh, of the, the Avalo, uh, angel of the Lord, and the, the Avalo standing at the right, uh, the right side of him, being an adversary against him. Now, how we ended up uh, where this is, it doesn't say it was in heaven. Seems, I assume it was, um, but uh, Joshua is mentioned uh, in Haggai, the chapter uh, that was right, it's right before uh, Zeph, uh, Zechariah. In Haggai, uh, he's mentioned four, five, six times. In 1-1 one, one of Haggai, uh, Haggai prophet has, God has Haggai tell Zerubbabel and uh, uh in Jesus uh, to rebuild the temple. And then uh, in 112, Zerubbabel and Joshua says they heard and hearkened is actually, it could be a better word, and they decided they're going to do something about it. Because then in 114, it says the Lord awakened the spirit of Jesus. And then in one, uh, I'm sorry, uh, two, two, and four, I believe, um, there, Zerubbabel and Joshua are told of a future restoration of um, Jerusalem and doesn't sound like anything that would have happened in the near future to the time that this was written. So this Joshua, now um, he's being told by the Lord in Haggai, and now Zechariah sees him in front of the angel of the Lord. And the devil at the right of him reminds me of, uh, what was it, uh, Job where the devil was accusing. Um, And there's another place where uh, the devil came and uh, he was accusing um, people and um, God said he would send a lying spirit. These were in the Old Testament. So uh, the idea of standing in front of the angel of the Lord happened a few other places with the devil at the right and being an adversary against uh, him against, uh, I suppose, uh, Joshua. And in verse 2, it says, And the Lord said to the the Avalon, uh, May the Lord reproach against you, uh, the Avoli, the, uh, the diabolic, comes from that. May the Lord reproach against you. So the Lord said to the devil, May the Lord, like himself, may the um, I, I don't know why it didn't say, I'm reproaching against you, O devil, but... It reminds me of with uh, Jesus and mentioning uh, in, in uh, uh, I think uh, I mean David in Psalms where the Lord said to my Lord and Paul used that to, to show that this uh, or I mean, Jesus showed that he said well then if David is calling him Lord how can he be his son so um, this is sort of the same thing uh, the Lord reproach against you uh, O devil and. May the Lord reproach against you, the one choosing Jerusalem. Uh, so uh, the devil has chosen to do damage, apparently, uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, it doesn't have, it didn't take, wasn't hard for him to do because the people were not following God. But now they're coming back and uh, Joshua is being told to rebuild. And then he says, uh, is this not a firebrand being pulled from out of the fire? Now, he's probably talking about uh, Satan 
uh, in the lake of fire, possibly, uh, in Revelations 9, 17, 18, and then in, uh, later in 14, uh, 10, where um, Satan uh, is associated with, with a burning fire. And Joshua was being clothed with filthy garments. Now, Jesus, Jesus, again, was being clothed. So this is why I wouldn't say that this was not talking about uh, Jesus, a type of Jesus, maybe. Uh, Joshua was being clothed with filthy garments. Well, Jesus could have had filthy garments uh, from being uh, on earth compared to being in heaven and stood in front of the Angelu. And the angel responded and said to the one standing in front of him, so there was apparently um, others there that were in, in Zacharias watching this, and so the ones that were all standing there in front of, now in front of him saying, uh, is in front of the angel, or uh, in front of one standing in front of uh, Joshua. Uh, let's see, we'll, we'll find out here. We go, it goes on to that saying, remove of the filthy garments from him, the imperative. And he said to him, uh, Behold, I took your iniquities, and you clothed him in a foot-length robe. Now, it's kind of confusing of these pronouns and who is that, and he took your iniquities. That would have seemed like it would have been God. It wouldn't have been the angel. And you clothed him in a foot-length robe. And he said, place, I would imagine it would be, was, could be the angel or the God, place also a miter and a clean turban upon his head. Now the miter is like uh, a crown, sort of, a, more of a pointed in the front, and the turban was a piece of cloth that they wrapped around their head. So he had both of these on his head. And they placed a miter and a clean turban upon his head, and they put garments around him. And the angel of the Lord stood. And the angel of the Lord testified to Joshua, saying, Now, as a possibility, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. That's another possibility, too. When he's, because the angel says it just, uh, that Joshua, was, he was back up there, that his iniquities were taken care of. So could be. And... The angel of the Lord testified to Joshua, saying, Well, thus says the Lord Almighty. So this could be the same type of a structure as it was in Psalms, where the Lord said to my Lord, Thus says the Lord Almighty, Pantocrator, If you should go in my ways, O this, an odometer means a, has a way, a road, measuring a road a distance, and you should keep guard my orders, then you shall litigate my house, and you shall guard my courtyard, and I will give to you ones pacing in the midst of these standing. So this is, uh, God is giving, uh, apparently, Joshua this, uh, uh, now, uh, 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 the priesthood, the great priest, but it's, it's almost, I mean, to me, I see Jesus in it so much of this uh, that God and Jesus is going to be given these things in the courtyard and everything, and it could be even in the New, uh, in the new Jerusalem. No, no. And then he says, Here indeed, O Esu, the great priest, you and your neighbors sitting down before in front of you. So here's the ones that were in front before I was questioning it. So now they're in front of Joshua. For... Uh, they are men that are observers of signs. For behold, I will bring my bondman rising. Well, now here we got now bondman rising. Who is the bondman rising? Well, let's go to the New Testament, and we will go to another man called Zechariah. In the New Testament, that was the father of John the Baptist. This is called Zacharias, instead of Zechariah, but it's still the same spelling. And uh, Zechariah, the father, uh, was, his father was filled of Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, I believe this was after his, uh, he was mute, uh, in, muted in the temple when the angel muted him because of his lack of belief. 
But now uh, once the son has been named John, then Zechariah prays and he says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. For he visited and made a ransoming to his people of Jesus and raised a horn of deliverance to us by the house of David. So a horn of deliverance, again, is a sign for Jesus as a figure. Uh, His servant, David, as he spoke by the mouth of the holy ones from the eon of his prophets. And then his son is going to be a prophet, John. A deliverance from our enemies and from out of the hand of all the ones detesting us to do mercy with our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant of the oath which he swore to Abraham our father and to grant to us, being rescued from out of the hand of our enemies to serve him fearlessly in sacredness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, John, shall be called prophet of the highest. For you shall go forth before the face of the Lord and prepare his ways to give knowledge of deliverance to his people and a release of their sins. So he's, John is going to be going forth to tell people about a deliverance from their sins, which is through Jesus, through feelings of compassion, of mercy of our God, in which, here it is, the rising Anatoly from out of the height visited us. The rising is Jesus. Um, So Zechariah in the New Testament is seeing this. He doesn't quite know who he is yet, probably. I don't think. Doesn't know his Jesus. Jesus is just a small child also. Actually, he was born later, so he wouldn't know. No, I don't know. It'll be around the time of his birth. To shine upon the ones in darkness and sitting in the shadow of death, to straighten out our feet unto the way of peace. And it goes on. So, Zechariah uses uh, this, uh, the rising, who is Jesus. So, Zechariah in the Old Testament, uh, behold, for behold, I will bring my bondman rising, Jesus. There it is. Zechariah saw who he was, the Messiah. And so, uh, both Zacharias, uh, Zechariah and Zacharias. Uh, for the stone, the lethos, which I put before the face of Joshua, Upon the one stone are seven eyes. So, uh, seven eyes will look upon the earth. Behold, I dig an excavation, says the Lord Almighty, and I will handle all the injustice of the land in one day. Well, I, the, what did that bring up to me? It brought up to me the crucifixion and the resurrection. In one day, it happened, and then Uh, He took care of the injustice that uh, people would now go to Christ and for their uh, the redemption and the forgiveness of sins and so forth and digging an excavation um, Well, what would be an excavation that he would be talking about it mentions uh, the um, uh, The wine vat was an excavation and the, uh, the grapes and so forth. It was uh, an excavation where they stomped uh, the wine. And um, stomping the blood of, of, uh, in, the, in this uh, wine vat, it mentions that in the book of Revelation, all kinds of ties together. And I dig an excavation, and I will handle all the injustice of the land in one day. I'm sure somebody else could come up with another interpretation, but this is mine. In that day, says the Lord Almighty, Pantocrator, you shall call together each his neighbor underneath a grapevine and underneath a fig tree. Uh, So the people are going to be called. It sounds like they will be in uh, some type of a uh, more peaceful calling them together uh, to be under the, in the grapevine and the fig tree, eating and having I don't know, a wonderful time. I'm not exactly sure. It's a possibility. Uh, it's not easy to come up with the, all these uh, different possibilities uh, as far as uh, I can be wrong on some of them, and hopefully they uh, make a little bit of sense as, as you uh, study the uh, third chapter of Zechariah. A very interesting 
chapter because it does have the rising, the one rising in Jesus. Zechariah, the same name, has the same uh, word used. I think that's pretty amazing. Our next chapter, chapter 4, we go into the lampstand uh, and the olive trees, which are also mentioned in the book of Revelation. And I hope you'll join us in chapter 4 as we go through this uh, video seminar coming up. And God bless.